Welcome back to Evolution of Bodybuilding's new YouTube channel. We continue with part four from our series of rare unseen footage from the greatest bodybuilding film ever made, Pumping Iron. Part four includes the unedited version of Arnold's interview. Stay tuned and subscribe to keep up to date with our latest uploads. Um, I was born in Graz, uh, in Austria, and uh, I lived there for 19 years, and then I moved to Germany, stayed there for two years, and then I moved to the United States, which was California. Twenty-eight. I'm twenty years old. Going on. And uh, so I never get upset when people call me, are you German? You know, I maybe say, well, I'm actually was born in Austria, but it's the same thing, you know, it's same people and same politics and stuff, so on, you know, so. Well, it's basically the same, you know, they're both, both very socialistic countries now, and uh, the people have the same feelings, and uh, it's pretty much the same people. I would say, for me, the greatest country in the world right now is America. Except, there's only one thing I don't like here, and that people go up, go on their own little trips too much. You know, the unity isn't there anymore. And I don't think it's that much the people's fault. I think it's uh, because we don't have a strong leader here. Because people, people basically want to look up to a leader. Uh, if it is a religious le leader, or if it is, uh, uh, you know, in... in meditation some leader or, or if in anything you know they just want to look up to somebody and and say what should i do you know and the american people didn't have this since kennedy uh, was assassinated you know and so i think it's just the government's fault in a way but uh, basically i like america the best it's uh, by far i think the best country And so I just tried out every sport. I went from boxing to wrestling to playing soccer to skiing to and until I hit uh, bodybuilding. And when I hit that, I knew that is the sport I want to do, and that maybe gets me up there to be the world's greatest. 
and I was striving for it with 100% energy, just striving for that. That I want to be the best. I want to stand up there. I want to have thousands of people applauding me and recognizing me. You know that I am the best. And that's it. You know, and I think that there's a lot to do with the drive I had. It wasn't just you know to to be into a competitive field and just to be the best. It's just that it feels great that when you know that when whenever you say something, people listen and they say, well, he must know he is the best. You know, it's a good feeling satisfying feeling. Sounds like the feeling of the Olympics. Right? Exactly. It's the same thing. You know, when you go on television as an athlete and somebody asks you a question, whatever you say, you know, people say, hmm, he has a point there. He's right because they think he must know. I mean, he did so much with his life, so he must have the answer. You know, like if Muhammad Ali says something, you know, people would say, the man is right. He's the one of the most influential people in the United States right now. I think so. I think so. What's the difference for you in trying to see it from a public space and a private audience? I think that uh, there's actually no difference except that uh, it's a different sport. But uh, we both put in as much training to be an adult. We both are the best and there's nobody better. And um, he there's a difference financially that he's making more money because his is uh, boxing is a bigger spectator sport than bodybuilding isn't it's an older sport so it's more recognized by the general public but other than that there's no difference yeah yeah right um i think there's actually no difference between muhammad ali and myself except it's uh, two different sports, you know, his is boxing and mine is bodybuilding. But uh, we both have to put in just as many hours in working out every day and preparing ourselves for world championships. And the only, s the only difference I can see is maybe financially, you know, that he makes more money than I do uh, because boxing is a more recognized uh, sport and it's a bigger spectator sport. And bodybuilding is pretty young. Does that maybe mean that that's why they do this to their bodies, their traps, no? No, but I think that bodybuilders are very, and athletes are very uh, physical people. And I think because they're so physical, they are also more into sex than maybe average businessmen. So that's probably the, the reason. Yeah. That is ex exactly what we need, I think, in the athletic community. We see that that unlike other activities, there seems to be a fairly high sexual content to bodybuilding. Um, fairly high, and and kind of both ways. Maybe that's what this boxing thing is trying to do. You mean that the. Uh Homosexuals get turned onto bodybuilders, or bodybuilders get turned onto men, or what do you? No, I just mean that it seems to be an activity. When you describe the rush of it, I'm not really talking about homosexuals. Right. Yeah. I mean, but sexuality seems to be present yeah. in bodybuilding as uh, it is less present in most other activities because it really is your body. We can't say. In, in basketball, the sexuality is disguised, it's symbolic, you're throwing a ball through a hoop. Many people would say that's very Freudian and so forth, but still it's very disguised, it's very in the background. In bodybuilding, it's very in the foreground, and I'm just wondering if that doesn't affect it. I don't think that uh, whatever sport you're doing, it has nothing to do with, uh, with, uh, with sexual at all. And I think that is one of the big problems in this country, that everybody... Uh, pulls out this sex, you know? I mean, uh, I hear this left and right. I mean, people watch football games, and when a coach slaps a football player on his uh, ass and says, go out now and get him, they say, well, he's a latent homosexual. He's only a coach because he wants to feel this guy's ass. That's actually the only reason, but he doesn't know about it. Uh, if you wrestle, then they say, well, you love 
body contact. You love to hug a guy and sweat and wrestle with a guy and maybe even kiss him, but you don't want to admit it because you're religiously brought up and you can't have this come out, so therefore you like to hug a guy on a wrestling mat. So whatever you do, people say it is, uh, he's a latent homosexual. You know what I mean? So therefore, that is the least thing I'm concerned about, uh, the bodybuilding. And every sport is getting attacked. Whatever you do, if you're a car racing driver, if you're into cars, we will say cars definitely is a replacement for sex. If you're really into politics, and uh, they say, well, he's so much into politics because he has nothing else going for himself sexually, it's all a replacement of sex. Well, I tell you one thing, I know that my bodybuilding is no replacement of sex because I get laid left and right and it, it, I'm not missing out on anything. So it definitely isn't in my case. Now, what other people do, I don't know, but as much as I know, they all live a very normal life, all the bodybuilders. And they enjoy it more than anybody else. So uh, I put bodybuilding so much on the same level than any other sport. I see no difference. I started shot putters, weightlifters, swimmers, they all are on the same trip. If they go before contest, they are uh, called, they go for the contest, they train their six hours a day, they eat good, they, they live uh, th the right way, and that's it, you know? And this is the same bodybuilder. That's it. Nothing sexual whatsoever that I can see. Right. And uh, I think this is what makes people leap, maybe, to that conclusion that you don't think is, is the right thing. Well, that why, that's why I also made this uh, comment about uh, a pump being equal to a pump, uh, to coming and to an orgasm and so on, because it is an equal feeling. But it's an equal feeling at that particular moment while you're in a gymnasium. So can you believe how much I am in heaven? <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No, but uh, that's, uh, you know, that's why I made this statement and uh, any other time it has nothing to do because the muscles are not hard, they're soft, they're just as soft as anybody else's body is, so, so it, it does not apply that the muscles continuously feels like having a hard one or something like that. No. I think that it is, I would say maybe the Japanese and the Chinese people have a disadvantage because they're little. I think the people in the Arab world have a disadvantage because they're naturally little people and uh, smaller people. But in, in general, I would say black, whites, Indian, whatever it, it might be, um, we ha they had champions. We have black champions, white champions and whatever, you know. So there's no disadvantage. Do you have any feeling of, of uh, racial uh, supremacy at all in, in any area, either in, in with regard to body or with politics? Um, no, I, in my opinion, everybody sh is equal, you know, and it doesn't matter if it is woman, it doesn't matter if it is black, yellow, red, Jewish, white, whatever it might be, you know, everything is equal, and I think that's how people should be treated, and that's that's basically it. Thank you.